KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227 or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Good morning. It's the Workers' Beat. The number here is 972-647-1893. I'm Gene Lance. and uh, I'm Bonnie Mathias, and the number is 972-647-1893. And this is the Workers' Beat program where we talk in favor of workers, yes. which is pretty unusual around here. Today at 9 o'clock, the Dallas AFL-CIO will be block walking. They're going to start at UAW 848-2218 East Main. You can hurry on out there because they stop and eat donuts. Yeah, they got breakfast and I bet it'll be 9.20 or 9.30 before they actually send anybody out. 2218 East Main in Grand Prairie. Now, next week, they're going to walk from the Pipe Fitters 100 local, 3829 West Miller Road in Garland, 75041. To get in on any of this AFL-CIO politicking stuff, call Pam Resendiz at 214-826-4808. Today, this afternoon, they're going to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Lake Cliff Park. Which is, oh, I saw that in the newspaper. It's just right across the river from Dallas. Yeah, that's a pretty cool park. Yes, it is. And uh, it used to be an amusement park yeah, at one time. And yeah. also there was a girls' college over there at one time. So uh, it's just a nice park today, and they're going to celebrate the 100th anniversary from 5 to 8 this evening. I live over there, you know. Yeah, yeah. September the 21st. Is that tomorrow? Yes. Yes. From 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., World Peace Day at SMU. At the Dallas Hall Lawn, 6425 Boaz Lane. That's within SMU. So you have to go in SMU, and then it's a whole different map, 6425 Boaz Lane. You can call the Dallas Peace Center to find out about that. It's 214-660-7676. On September 22nd, Monday from 10 to 4 p.m., and this is actually Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. There'll be phone banking in the morning from Alliance AFT, that's the teacher's hall, 334 Center Street, 75208 in Dallas. In the afternoons from 5 to 8 p.m., they will be calling from 1408 North Washington in East Dallas. That's Bonnie's Union yep. Hall. Second floor. This goes on all the way through October. So it's phone banking Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday in the morning at the teacher's hall and in the evening at uh, at uh, 1408 North Washington. All right, on September the 22nd, at 1 o'clock, the United Auto Workers are starting their phone banking. All right. Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Local Union 276, which is 2505 W.E. Roberts in Grand Prairie. Uh, Monday through Thursday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., this is the evening shift, this will be from Local Union 218, which is 98 West Hurst Street in Hurst. For more information, call Dennis Anderson at 972-816-7, uh, excuse me, start over, 972-816-6504. Hey, Dennis Anderson is organizing phone banking for the Auto Workers Union. Can you, can you, do you take care of the, the AFL, the, the CLC website? Yes. Can you put all that on their website? It is. Okay. but It's on the Dallas AFL-CIO website, which is a little bit of a funny name. It's tx.aflcio.org slash Dallas CLC. Actually, I think... Kind of hard to find. Actually, I think if you Google Dallas AFL-CIO, you, you'll, you'll find it. Yeah, you'll it. get it that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. On September the 22nd from 3 to 5 p.m., the People's Climate Change March and Rally in Fort Worth, sponsored by the Green Party. I'm not too sure if this is just a political thing or if they're actually part of the, the national march, you know, for on, on the climate. I think, that's, I think that is the, the 
Well, there's another one. There's another one on the 23rd. Oh. On September the 23rd, first of all, it's Voter Registration Day. Everybody's supposed to get themselves yes. voter registered to vote on September 23rd. Also, and uh, the Texas Alliance for for Retired Americans, which is my organization, has got some stuff uh, ready to do on Voter Registration Day. You can contact me about that. September the 23rd at 10 a.m., the North Texas People's Climate Press Conference and Rally at the Dallas City Hall in the Flag Room. And this, of course, is the Dallas Peace Center again. And the number for them is 214-660-7676. Now, one more thing. No, two more things. Veterans for Peace is getting together a press conference for noon on Tuesday, September 23rd at the Earl Cabell Federal Building. Contact Leslie Harris. On September the 25th at 3 p.m., and I guess this is probably the most most important announcement of, of them all. Strategic planning at 1408 North Washington. This is the group that's bringing together the unions and community organizations and activists who want to work together yeah. and uh, and figuring out how they, you know what the problems are in our area and what we're going to do about them as a group as a coalition. So uh, the strategic planning at three o'clock on September 25th is pretty important. You can call Rosemary Rieger about that, and she's at the Dallas FLCO 214-826-4808. It's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it is. It's a, that's a, an awesome uh, coalition to, to be a part of. Uh, I was fortunate to be invited uh, to go to, to San Antonio uh, back in May, I believe it was, when this kind of all came together. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's, it's really awesome stuff. Yeah. And and I just uh, I just read uh, Larry Cohen's letter of he's resigning. He's, he's resigning. He's not seeking reelection. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So Larry he, Cohen is the president of, of the Communication S- Workers of America. Yeah. And one of the activist leaders at the national level who's been trying to get everybody else uh, in gear. Yes. Yes. Uh, and he talks about it uh, that he wants to work to continue to pull people together. Uh-huh. Uh, and AFL-CIO is, the, is doing the same thing. Uh, Rich Trumpka is, is very much uh, reaching out to other organizations, community organizations, because labor, uh, as, we, as we stood once, uh, I mean, at one time we were 35% of this country was organized. Yeah. We didn't need no friends. We didn't need no friends. <laughs> we didn't need no stinking friends. Well, now we need friends. Yeah. Uh, and, and labor, I mean, I've always been very inclusive, and, and now labor is going, hey, you know what? We have to, we have to work with organizations like TOP and, and like Code Pink and uh, the climate change folks. We NAACP. Have to all, NAACP, LULAC, all these people, and they're all there. Mm-hmm. And we're all working together for the same thing. I mean, we all want the same thing. There are very few labor leaders in the North Texas the, over the years that have worked both in labor and tried to bring in our community allies. But I'm sitting next to one of them. Thank you. Thank you. And I want you to, I want you to have the pleasure of the big announcement. The big announcement concerning the, is? Concerning the workers at American Airlines. Oh, my gosh. This is the most exciting news ever. Uh, on Tuesday afternoon... Uh, 14,500 customer service agents of American Airlines and U.S. Airways voted overwhelmingly at 86% to join CWA. Uh, I'm just, and, and some of them are actually Teamsters. Joe's clapping. It's a golf clap. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's a radio clap. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Wow. I'm sorry. They didn't teach me that in broadcasting school. <laughs> I didn't go to broadcasting school. Yo, yeah, oh, okay. Well, he would know then. U.S. Airways workers in this category were already unionized, uh, but the American airline workers were not at, before the airlines merged. Uh, folks, this is this is an incredible step for the labor movement as a whole. I am so proud of CWA. I am so proud of my friends Mike Lavolo and uh, and Stephen Sandy Langhe, Rusher. Sandy Rusher, uh, Stephen Langhe here. Uh, I am so proud of my friends. I know Mike has worked on this campaign for 19 years. <laughs> 19 years. I, I hope he's on vacation. I don't know. He may still be celebrating. 
Uh, he's an awesome organizer, incredible organizer for CWA. I'm very is, proud. I think this is the third time they brought it to a vote. Actually, yeah, we lost in December last year mm -hmm. by 150 votes. It was, mm -hmm. it, but the judge found in our favor that American Airlines was uh, unfair labor practices. They oh, were having Stuff captive meetings and mm -hmm. and not allowing us uh, access to. Is that why they didn't have to wait a whole year? Oh. Yes. For you to, yes. uh, to, because yes. usually when you lose an election, you, you have, have to wait, wait a whole a year. year. Right. But the judge ruled in our favor and said that oh, American Airlines had actually uh, engaged in unfair labor practices. So once the merger was complete, we were allowed to conduct another election. So if, if the company cheated, then you get the whole election. That's right. As soon as you can get it together. <laughs> That's right. Now, all 14,500 of these new union members do not live in Dallas and Tarrant counties. No. It's, but a, a bunch of them do. A lot of them do, yeah, because it's American Airlines of course is based here uh, and I, I guess US Airways has has adopted Dallas as, as their home now too they've they've uh, mm -hmm. uh, so this is the this is a big hub for them it's a very big hub for them and we have a lot of flight attendants a lot of ticket agents gate agents a lot of people who work from home I've got uh, the perfect uh, project for them if they're ready to do it because American has been taking advantage of its retirees yes, they and have. Uh, have been cutting into some of their retiree benefits that have been have been their benefits for years and years and years and the American Airlines the retirees are fighting back yeah. and uh, we're proud to be part of that in the, in the labor movement I think we should reach out to Mike and ask him if hey hey can we mobilize these folks mm -hmm. that's a good idea we, we love doing that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, we this do. is the Workers' Beat program, <laughs> and we like it when workers win. Uh, unfortunately, for a long time, we have a, we have a dry spell. Yeah, we've, we, had, we, we've had a dry spell since, don't uh, have that much to brag about. since Uncle Ronnie Reagan came in and, and destroyed our world. A lot of stuff that's gotten better, though, under President uh, Obama oh, yeah. for oh, yeah. working people. Absolutely. For example, uh, Texas is going to get a $1.2 million to go after the employers who misclassify workers. In other words, mm -hmm. if you're really working for a company, but they say, well, you're an independent contractor, yeah. they're cheating and lying. Yeah. And uh, they're yeah. going to get some more federal money to fight back on that. They're also really? going to get some more federal money for uh, uh, unemployment insurance that's going to be coming in that's going to help them build the unemployment insurance in Texas. Joe's that's on the good. line. Good morning, Joe. Thanks for calling KNON. Hey, we're going to be team. Glad to hear from you, brother. Hey, same here, same here. I was listening there about the benefits, and it triggered something in my old mind. The mind is a terrible thing, Gene. <laughs> it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing to waste. Uh, it's a terrible thing, period, Gene. It's like freedom of speech. It's, it's give you a right to say sane stuff and insane stuff. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, the fire and uh, benefit fund. Did you hear about the pension fund? Yeah. Did you hear yeah. that they quietly lost a hundred? I think it's one hundred ninety-three million dollars. Yeah, that's right. That's right. By old, by old chicken investments. And what those suckers did, they tried to quietly let it just slumber alone. Mm -hmm. But someone exposed their dirty hand. They was investing their money in old shaky real estate deal. What a mess. Really, that sounded a really kind of. Kind of uh, uh, far out some of the things they were yeah. putting money into. Yeah, hey, hey, I was hey, luxury Dean, I homes you and. and Hey, I know you and your yeah, and, and, right. They was doing it, uh, taking shares for luxury homes, and see the devil many times in the details. You got some of these people that's making those those shaky deals. They know it's a heck of a unfair risk. Yeah. But that one percent is looking out for themselves. They could line their own coffers yeah. by going for the big high dollar property. Little man, he doesn't even own any of that mess, and they lost those people money. I believe it was a hundred and. $93 million, I believe. I believe you're right. I saw that in the Dallas paper. Right. I mean, who's going to pay the price for this stupidity? It'd be different now if the whole stock market had gone down or something like that. Yeah. Then you could it, say, well, you know, nothing could be done about it. 
but but they lost one hundred and ninety million dollars during a time when the stock market was going up like crazy. Yeah, exactly. yeah. As, man, as somebody as, messed up big time here. Yeah, and somebody Ooh. should that somebody should pay dear for that. There should be some skin left on the ground somewhere around uh, uh, where that took place. As your sidekick, they say, Gene, all the time, mm. the one percent can only succeed if that ninety nine percent elect to do nothing. Have a good day. All right, Thank thanks you. so much, Thank Joe. You. And it, we'll, that ought to become our mantra, you know. We'll, right. we'll repeat that all the time. Speaking of repeating things, we were supposed to read this. A KNON event. KNON tribute to James Brown. Wow. With who? Little Jimmy and the Feedback Band and Briefcase Blues. And when? This Sunday, tomorrow, September the 21st, where? The Gas Monkey Bar and Grill 2010. 261. That's 10261 Technology, Dallas, Texas. Doors open at 6 p.m. Show at 7 p.m. Tickets are available at knon.org. Forever Young Records, Bill's Records, Comp Cleaners in Fort Worth, and the Gas Monkey Bar and Grill. For information, call 214-471-4180 or go to knon.org. There will also be a James Brown dance contest. Winners take trophies. So that's a, I guess that's a fundraiser for KNON and a tribute to James Brown. About time. That's a, that's a great idea because uh, the movie's been here and gone, and uh, uh, it's on like that. More good news. More than 2,600 current and former employees of Shell Oil Company and Motiva Enterprises will be receiving checks for unpaid overtime after a federal investigation found they hadn't been paid to attend mandatory pre-shift meetings. This is a deal where the boss says you have to come in early to go to a meeting, but you ain't going to get but paid But we're not going to pay you. Yeah. Mm. And even Shell Oil was doing it. You know, you can see some little little punk outfit maybe getting away with that. But even Shell Oil was doing it. Well, the company, the employees got, got wind of it. They went to the Department of Labor. And uh, thank goodness President Obama's Department of Labor actually responds to labor. And now they're all going to pick up checks. The two energy giants have agreed to pay nearly $4.5 million in back overtime wages to the 2,677 current and former chemical and refinery employees after federal regulators found violations of the labor law. Isn't that cool? I think BP just got hit with some more, too. Some, some more, more stuff? Yeah. From Was the, that from uh, federal or from lawsuits? Uh, from federal. Uh-huh. From, uh, uh, they let it go. They uh-huh. let that thing go for weeks before they told anybody. Uh-huh. And... Uh, I guess that's got them. Couldn't some... happen to an usher company. I know, right? <laughs> the Alliance for Retired Americans, uh, United for Change, and some other allies held a rally at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. to say, hands off Social Security and Medicare. Because yeah. that's, they're going to try again. Uh, and if, they, if the Republicans win the election, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid are in bad trouble because they've been yeah. trying to cut it. And, or pri- and privatize it. That's what they want to do. They haven't do. had a majority in the Senate, so they couldn't have done it. And we have got to make sure that we get out and vote, folks. This is You have got a very short time to register to vote mm-hmm. if you have moved. Well, you got up till October 5th, I think. Right. But, to you, you know, this is the 20th yeah. of September. Uh, they have to have it in by October by 5th. By October 5th. In other words, right. it has to arrive at, at the, the uh, post office. At the or at county. The county. No, Yep. County election service. And, you know, a lot of people, uh, I'm a voter registrar. I'm sure Gene is, too. Uh, I'll just here's the voter registration card. Give it back to me. Mm-hmm. I will deliver it. If you need any help getting uh, registered, call the Dallas Elections Office. Yep. And here's the number, 214-637-7937, 214-637-7937. I hear the music playing, and we must take a short break. And it comes Saturday Saturday morning. morning. That's right. 972-647-1893 is the number here. And the station actually loves it when you call. We like it, too. They truly do. Here's some more good news. The Department of Labor will be announcing a $100 million grant competition this fall to expand American apprenticeship programs to more industries as part of President Obama's commitment to double the number of apprenticeship programs over the next five years. 
And that came from the Department of Labor News. That's this excellent. ties in with something that's going on here in Dallas called Operation Phoenix. Phoenix Project, in, yes. In which the Dallas AFL-CIO is cooperating with the Workforce Board and the District Attorney's mm-hmm. Office and other people, and they are trying to stop the, the what do they call it, school-to-prison pipeline? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. School-to-prison pipeline. That's where and, young, uh, young people end up in jail. Yeah, and, and folks that are young that make a mistake, okay? Uh-huh. Um, and we're talking... 17 to 30, uh-huh. uh, and maybe even 35, depending on, on the circumstance. People with a first offense. People with a first They're offense. They're going to try to get them into the apprenticeship programs for the building trades. Yes. You can make a good living. You sure can. In the building trades. I mean, even the, the apprentice, one of the apprentice programs starts at 14 bucks an hour. So, so it's I a pretty mean, good job yeah, to start with. If huh? you can get in there, you know, now there's things that you have to do. you got to go to school. Uh, I mean, there's qualifications that mm-hmm. these people are going to have to uh, going to have to uh, have. They may have to have extra year analysis, uh, but these folks are going to be held accountable, and and we're going to keep them out of the justice system because we don't need any more young people in our prisons. Trust you could me. be a, you could be an iron worker instead yeah, of a convict. Yeah, instead you know, of a convict. Or, I mean, you know, because uh, once you get that. That felony, if you have a felony conviction, you are screwed. You can't get an apartment. You can't get a job. You can't get utilities in your name. You can't even vote until you, you get off your paper. Yeah, you can't vote till you're off paper, but at least that's one good thing Texas did. They just didn't tell anybody they did it, <laughs> which is just like Texas. Uh-huh. Uh, but, you know, it's and now you, you everybody needs to look at their voter registration card, and their driver's license. And make sure that those two forms of identification match exactly. Y'all, this is crazy. Yeah, it's, that's it's true. voter suppression. That's but, on that voter registration business. Yeah. You need to check your voter card and yeah. check it against your driver's license and see if they match exactly. I mean exactly. You can't have your initial on one and your full name on the other one. Yeah. Uh, they have to match exactly. Well, they are supposed and your to address use, has to match exactly. They are supposed to use common sense. If it says it says you live on Elsbeth Street, if it says that on your driver's license, and it says Elsbeth Avenue on your voter registration, they are liable to stop you from voting. They're yep. liable to hold up your vote or make you vote a challenge yep. vote or something like that. Make you talks, so yep. this is part of the voter suppression law. That's right. So here's what you do. If it, if it don't match exactly, you just register again. And so they get it right. That's right. They send get one of those white cards. And let me give the number again for voter registration. This is the one for Dallas County. I don't have the one for Tarrant County. But for Dallas County, it's 214-637-7937. If you live in Tarrant County, call the Dallas County one and ask for the Tarrant County number. Yeah. 214-637-7937. And get it right the first time because they are trying to stop you from voting. I sure There's are. no question about that. Uh, I don't care how much they lie about it. <laughs> that is exactly no, what they're trying to what do. No, that's not what we're doing. No, no, not oh, at all. Oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah. No, no, that's not it. I've heard them say some strange things. Mm. I watched the television debates last night. Oh, and, yes, I did, And too. heard mm-hmm. outright lies. Yeah, but, I heard uh, some of those. There's no way to stop it. If you, if you say it nice, it still comes out like you're doing something good. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, but they're just outright lies being told. The uh, leaders of the Christian, Jewish, and Muslim faiths gathered at a meeting convened by the U.S. Secretary of Labor, Thomas E. Paris, on September 16th to hear about issues facing low-income workers, especially the need to raise the national minimum wage. Oh. Now, that, that's national. But here locally, the faith leaders, especially led by Reverend Dr. Jorg Rieger, yes. have been uh, fighting for uh, better wages yes. for this area. And they, they have some great allies, especially County Judge Clay Jenkins. I've heard County Judge Clay Jenkins speak four times in this election cycle, yeah. and I have yet to hear him say vote for me. Or even give a money to my campaign or anything about campaigning. All he talks about is raising people's wages. He's talking Isn't about that amazing. It is. Wow. He doesn't even say who he is. He doesn't even get up and, and, and give his name, you know, and say, call my campaign or something like that. He just talks about raising wages. That is, uh, that's fabulous. And he's got a lot of other 
candidates speaking up for raising wages. That happened in the debates last night. Uh, gubernatorial candidate hmm. uh, uh, Davis gave her uh, spiel for raising wages. And, of course, the... Uh, the other side is generally in favor of keeping the wages low. Of course. Because they're for big business. There you but, go. And but he anyway, made that a lot clear. of politicians are saying that. And the most remarkable and astounding thing happened over the past week. The perennially anti-worker newspaper called the Dallas Morning News came out with a lead editorial saying, raise the minimum mm -hmm. wage. The, they're on, pro, they're on, on the program with President Obama to raise the minimum wage to $10.10 an hour over the next three years. And index so that's his program. It's not enough. No, it's not. But he will, his, also, his proposal also says to index the minimum wage so that it rises every year with the cost of living. Yeah. So when the cost so, of living goes yeah, up, your, so your minimum, your minimum wage, wage, goes wage goes up. Which is what we should have done when we raised it to seven twenty five. dollars I nearly so. fell on the floor, though, to see a lead editorial from the Dallas oh, Morning no. News. Oh, wow. An anti-worker newspaper yeah. since the 1850s. <laughs> oh my God. I'm serious. 1843 really? is when it was started in Galveston. Wow. And uh, they've been anti-worker all along, and, and yet they're out coming out for a minimum wage because, not because it's good for workers, no. but because it's good for the economy. Yeah. The economy is suffering because of low wages. Good morning, Randy. Let's see what Randy has to say. Thanks for calling KNN, brother. Good morning, you guys. Glad hey, to hear uh, from you. Uh, Clay Jenkins, this is about getting people raised because two year, uh, two weeks ago when I was down at the county commissioner thing and I was discussing that jail issue, uh, they the court approved their self a raise. Yes, they did. Five percent. Yes, they did. Five percent. They voted their self a five percent raise. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. And there was no nobody stepped up and even complained to that. And and mm -hmm. when I realized, well, you know, Gene, when you make seven seventy five an hour, ten dollars an hour. And they say, we're going to give you a 5% raise. And we go, okay, thanks a lot. But it wasn't that much. But when they say they're going to get a 5% raise, it was like $6,500. I think they get a, a 130000 a year, don't they? Something like that. Mm -hmm. But now it's 140 something thousand uh -huh. because they got a 5% raise. But this so, gives so a little yeah. credit to the county commissioners. They are also in favor of every county employee getting a raise and the contract laborer. Because well, uh, he was also trying to get his truancy court judges that he's over a 5% raise annually and mm -hmm. the people that work for them only a 2% raise annually and a 3% possible raise annually on uh, uh, performance pay. Well, that's all good and fine and dandy if your budget was being met. But if you're still in the Red in your budget, why are you giving yourself a 5% raise? That didn't make no sense to me. Well, they are in the red. And, I didn't know that. No, they're not. Well, they, told, they were saying everybody that it was going to cost a certain amount of millions of dollars uh, to do to fund a jail uh, for this next thing they're trying to sign on a contract, mm -hmm. but they were still going to be $9 million short. So uh -huh. that tells me they're short. So, I, I mean... I guess it's so normal since Congress has been given uh, their self a raise probably my whole kid's lifetime, 20-something years. I it's think they get a raise norm. just about every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every year they vote their self a raise. So I guess it's normal, and we down here in Dallas didn't even bat an eye when now we're giving each one of those judges, except for one, Miss Garcia, she refused her raise. She didn't say put it back in the budget. She said, I want to transfer it to this certain nonprofit that I, I would like to see get the money. Oh, I see. So that's kind of a good thing. But if that was sixty, almost $6,500 annually for five people. I see. Now, that's the first year. And then next year, it's 5% off of $142,000. You see where I'm going? Mm -hmm. they, they voted... I mean, I think that was more or just as heinous as what they were trying to do with uh, cut off the personal business at, uh, at the jail. But nobody spoke nothing about it. So, yeah, I'm kind of pre pleased with Judge Jenkins. But in another way, I'm kind of upset because we still have half of the bulls in uh, South Dallas closed from, what, three or four years ago? He doesn't have anything know, to do with the pools. I know that's that city. Too, I understand that's two different entities. Yeah, we're trying to but, get the city on the same program. Trying to get the city to say that every 
everybody that works for the city, including the contract laborers, need a raise. Because yep. uh, well, the mayor have... says, oh, yeah, the city employees, that's just fine. But he's not talking about the contract laborers because there's a lot of people work uh, subcontracting. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, that's the way. That's the way. Now that you don't have to pay benefits or overtime or anything like that. Yeah, well, that's everybody knows that. They've the been workers. doing that since they've been doing that since the seventies. We're so used to that, we just take it with a smile on our face. Mm. So I, I would have been a lot more impressed with Mr. Jenkins, Judge Jenkins, if he would have said, "Look." I'm going to guarantee that everybody gets a raise, uh, the minimum wage, and then we're going to get a raise. Afterwards. But it's still, it's still after the fact, mm-hmm. that would have been more impressive because he's already, I mean, just with that one job, he's already making 136, 137, well, it's 141 now. Mm-hmm. Thousands of dollars a year, not including what he does in his own other personal life. He doesn't life. have anything other than the county. That's what he does. Well, you know what? I'd probably go down there and do it for sixty-five thousand dollars a year. Well, they could get, the they could get Randy for sixty-five. Mm-hmm. Uh, Archie and do the monkey <laughs> show to get down there because what I seen was John Wally Price and my county commissioner uh, Mike uh, Randall, I think is his name, uh, on the other side of Judge Jenkins, talking with a stick constantly, trying to say, "Oh, well, we got to stop and do this, and we got to stop and do that." Well, I understand that, but it was just the way they did it. And uh-huh. then when he tries to talk, then he tries to talk and explain the thing that he has on the table trying to get past. You got John Wally the Price over there wringing his hands, throwing his hands up, laying back, because he got to sit there and listen to the man talk. It's running the thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if, if, you go to, if you haven't gone down there, you want to see a real funny dog and pony show, uh, the tail wag the dog thing, Go to the county court. When do they uh, meet? Commissions. When do they meet? Tuesdays at, Tuesdays at nine o'clock. Tuesdays over at nine. in that building right there, down there where they shot JFK. And they have uh, open mic for part of that. Well, supposedly you have to pre-register on Friday or the day before. You can't just like walk in there and say, "Hey, I want to put my name on a list," like some of the you know your local city council meetings. You have to pre-register, just like in Dallas City Council. You have to pre-register the week uh-huh. before about what you want to talk about next week uh, so you guys are doing a good show and I, and I hope we do get the minimum raise wage federally raised to ten dollars an hour would the attachment that should have went with it a long time ago to raise it annually according to the inflation rate that's right if they had a, if they had been raising it by the inflation rate since what was it 1967 it would already be $18 <laughs> or something like that we would already be almost we almost be doing all right, wouldn't we, Gene? Yes, we would. Well, thanks so much, Randy. Hey, here's a look. Here's a look tip for everybody. There's a whole bunch of local farmer markets going on today, all over the metroplex, from Garland to Irvin to Dallas. Go support somebody local that's doing a good thing. Uh-huh. Y'all later. Good deal. Thank you, Randy. Nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. If you're interested in getting your opinion registered on workers' issues. I was just saying that the Dallas Morning News has come out in favor of raising wages because the economy is hurting. The money is piled up so high uh, down at the rich end of the scale, and they're not spending it. So the economy is just just, uh, not moving as fast as it would because the people who have all the money are not spending it. Uh, They're just sitting on it or or investing it abroad or something. Yeah, yeah. uh, And people who would like to spend money can't get their hands on any. So even the Dallas Morning News is coming out for a raise in the minimum wage. You know, ten dollars and ten cents an hour. That's that's not so great, but it's a lot better than whatever it is now, seven twenty-five or something like yeah. that. So it would certainly uh, make an impact on on uh, thousands and thousands of lives uh, throughout Dallas. I mean, we have to think about. It's not, I mean, I talked to a guy yesterday who works in a warehouse. Uh, he has an engineering degree, mm-hmm. but he's in working a in a warehouse. Yeah. Uh, as a, you know, it's it's just, it's kind of, it's just kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, they say, you know, if you get a college education, you'll do better. Oh, and, that's and what they true. say. Well, yeah. It's but... true up until a point. 
But what they don't, what they don't really realize when they figure all that out about, about how much a college education is worth, mm-hmm. they don't figure out that the people who went to college already were already on a track to make a lot of money. Right. In other words, the, the, the ones that, that can afford to go to college have already got the contacts, they already got the friends and the parents and all that that are going to help their country club uh, membership and all that. They're, they're, they're going to make money anyway whether they go to college or not. So when you go to college, you can't expect to do as well as they do. No. Nevertheless, going to college is a pretty good idea, it and is. you'll do better it than is. you would otherwise. And, and, and I, I, so really, say. I would like to see, you know, we talked about a little bit in the Phoenix Project about um, the, the occupational and technical training trade schools uh-huh. that used to be included in our high schools. Yeah. Uh, you know, you had wood shop and metal shop and auto shop and uh, home economics, where they actually taught you how to boil water. Um, you know, but just almost life skills training, so that you know how to do laundry, you know how to load the dishwasher, uh, you can boil an egg or make macaroni and cheese, and really, just if you decide that you really don't want to go to college, maybe you really like metal shop, Mm -hmm. or you really like wood shop. Maybe you want to be a carpenter. Maybe you want to be a... a, Honorable position. It is. Oh, my... Jesus was a carpenter. Uh, Just saying. (laughs) Gotta go. Yeah, you know, Joe just puts us on the air to make us quit singing. That's right. He's like, oh, God, stop. I'm actually trying to catch you singing. Oh, no. (laughs) 647-1893 is the number, and Joshua is on the line. Thanks for calling k and win brother. Good morning. Hey, uh, I wanted to try to contribute a little bit to the conversation about college education and, mm-hmm. and value. Uh-huh. Um, I've taught and I've been in universities for a long time, and I think that uh, the main problem with university education now in terms of its value, especially for uh, low-income people is um, that sometimes people choose to go into debt to get a college education. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is where I see the real difficulty um, because if at the at the end the the higher-paying jobs aren't necessary there, even if they are there, one is paying off student loans yeah. for a long time. And I'm not sure about the statistics on it, but I think that's one of the next to um, housing. Debt. I think that's another huge chunk of American debt. So I guess my having taught in all different kinds of levels of universities, I think the most important advice I would think I would give to a person who is looking to do a, a college degree is whatever you do, don't go into debt to do it. Um, take a class at a time. You know, there are night classes now that are available. Um, there are online classes, things like this. Mm-hmm. But uh, especially for people who I see a lot of people, students wanting to go and get master's degrees and and get loans for that, and I'm just thinking, oh my goodness, <laughs> be so be careful because it can be a, a crippling debt that, that yeah. uh, is hard to get rid of. I think yeah, that student absolutely. loan debt exceeded credit union debt. I don't know, I'm a credit card debt. Credit card debt, yeah. yeah, and it got to be a bigger problem in the American economy than credit card debt yeah. uh, over the last year or so. I don't know if it's still like that. But uh, it was for a while anyway. Uh, student loan debt is really, really high. I, and, I've met a lady uh, this week who is trying to get her student loans paid off before her child is ready to go to mm-hmm. school because she wants to make sure her she can pay her kids loan her kids college so that child is not saddled with mm-hmm. that debt. Yeah. So I think the good, the good thing about it now is there are so many programs that are there that have night classes. Um, you know, summer summer class type things, but um, yeah, I think the, there's a real risk um, for, especially for low income and working class families, in taking on the kind of debt uh, that comes with full time uh, studentship. <laughs> what do you think about what do you think about this though, Joshua? I maintained a while ago. I just said a while ago that mm-hmm. a lot of the people that make more money after they get out of college are the same people that would have been making a lot more money anyway. Yeah, because I, they I, came from families where they had the connections. They, you know, they, you go through four years of college and then go to work for your dad. Well, you could have just gone to work for your dad to begin with. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's uh, 
what uh, some academics call social capital, right? You, the, the, the people already have those connections. Yeah. Uh, the degree itself is is almost irrelevant. They, mm-hmm. um, I know. I know. Three years after I finished my bachelor's degree, I was back scrubbing floors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a true fact. That's, That's a true fact. I was scrubbing floors in Houston, Texas, uh, mm-hmm. after I got my uh, bachelor's degree. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a decision to be taken very seriously, I think, and, and uh, I encourage, I think education is great, and maybe, Gene, I remember one time you said something about a, you were doing some kind of free school program or some uh-huh. other things like this. There, there are other forms of education, I think, that can, that can help, especially with the, the labor movement, um, but yeah, I, I would hope that people would really take that uh, decision seriously and, and avoid the debt at, uh, as much as possible. If I had, instead of starting college when I did, which was 1957, <laughs> if I had gotten a union job at LTV in 1957, I'd be so I'd be so rich right now. You wouldn't be able to touch me. I well, you, be, but then you I'd wouldn't be, be here with me, Gene. I wouldn't be here with Bonnie. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, 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 I'll I spent years that. and years in college <laughs> scrubbing floors at night, you know, or washing dishes. Okay, you, uh, you and, went to college. Uh, the going year. to college. You went to well, Dean, I'm going to enjoy that. I'm going to enjoy that image of you as the the fat cat with the top hat and then monocle for a while. All right. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to y'all later. Thanks, Joshua. Thanks so much, Bye. Joshua. We were talking about the minimum wage, and I make this I make this assertion all the time, and it is true that there is a line that needs to be crossed, or a line that should not be crossed. Some people say it's the picket line. But it, the lot, you can always tell which side people are on by asking them about wages. Yep. If rich people are are solidly in favor of low wages, right. employers hey. are solidly in favor of low wages, and workers are solidly in favor of higher wages. So if you if you come out for higher wages, a lot of people ought to vote for you. Well, and I I would think I hope that people took the time to watch the debate last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I heard, Wendy Davis talked about the people, the people of the state. She calls them hardworking Texans. Hardworking Texans of the state. Mm-hmm. Greg Abbott talked about money. Money, money, money. He did not talk about anything but money. Okay, let's see what Leon has to say. Thanks for calling k brother. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. for calling. Yeah, uh, I wanted to uh, touch on something that... Uh, I don't know whether it sneaks under the radar or if you can use that as a, a, a way to uh, define it. Uh, these uh, these right to work state laws that they have, mm-hmm. where where you don't uh, you don't have any the, the worker has no uh, no recourse when the uh, the owner business owner decides he wants to fire him. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I had a job uh, back in the winter time, and I was uh, fixing computers. I have a computer uh, science degree. And I was repairing computers, and I got hired uh, at this facility to uh, in Grapevine to uh, fix computers. And I had been there about three weeks, and uh, they told me that I wasn't fixing computers fast enough. Uh-huh. And I said, well, I fixed three computers last night. And they said, well, uh, you need to be able to fix five. I said, well, I've only been here three weeks, and y'all have 152 different models. Dang. And I said, and then they said, well, you know, they didn't do it. They told the temp service to do it. This little petite lady from the temp service told me that that's why they were laying me off. Yeah. And, and with the temp you know, service, you know, they can do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or right. they get well, away with it. I, right, they get away with it, right. And and you have no recourse, whereas if you're on a union shop, they have to find something as to what, whether you're on a probationary period, uh, they have to evaluate you, and uh, mm-hmm. if you're not doing something appropriate, they have to write it up. Right. When you've got these right-to-work states, which are, I don't know whether it's a coincidence or it's a, a legacy of slavery, they have these uh, this ability to just terminate you without any notice. You you don't have to do anything. The boss just decides right. to lay you off. They, and, they can fire you for no reason. That's right. For no reason. And, and, uh, and how are you going to earn a living when you don't know... You don't even have to do anything. The boss got mad at his old lady last night for what didn't happen last night. He can come in and lay you off. That's right. That's right. That's right. And and, and I think these, these, this this needs to be addressed along with the minimum wage. Amen. And you know it's because you know people have a right to be to give be given a fair chance and on a job and be told if they're not.
performing properly, they need to be told that they're not performing properly and given a chance to correct it right. instead of just, you know, get out the door. Right. I preach that to the company all day, all day when I'm sitting in grievance meetings when they terminated people. You know, I look. I have to look across the table and think. I look at this guy and say, "Look, this this person's been here for 17 years, so I know that they've been doing something right up until the last six months. Uh-huh. So what changed? Oh, the metrics changed. Oh, the metrics changed." So you think she can't do her job anymore, so you're using false statistics to to govern what this person should be doing, what you think she should be doing. Mm-hmm. And, and they just they can't even they can't answer it. And we just won an arbitration over what they call MSOC, which is a, a time measurement thing that a lot of our people are, are held to, and we just won an arbitration against that. Because it is, it's mechanical most, most people don't numbers. Know, most of our reader, listeners may not know what an arbitration is. That means, that means that after the union and the company have fought it out, and if they have a union contract, they can go to a, an outside arbitrator. And this outside arbitrator decides which one of them was right. Yep. That's if you have a union, because right. as Leon is telling us, though, if you don't have a union to com- in Texas anyway, the company right. just does anything they want to. Right, right Leon? Well, it, this is this is this, throughout any of these states that have these right to work laws. Even Michigan, I think, has those laws. Mm-hmm. Well, but, so we need federal protection. Yes, we that, do. You we know, do. it governs all the states and, and requires mm-hmm. them that if they're going to fire you, they have to have at least written you up a couple of times or three times yeah. to show yeah. that you've been, you know, uh, negligent or whatever right. more than once. And so you just say, "Well, I just made a mistake one time." Well, if you've done it three times, mm-hmm. that's a different story. But if yeah. I, I, you say I made a mistake one time, you're fine. But we need federal protection to make sure that, that we can keep our job and we can have some kind of peace of mind when we go to work that the boss just ain't going to come in there, you know, with wet hair and just get rid of us. Right. Yeah, and really, exactly. we don't ever find out about it, but but sometimes it turns out really he's got a cuss and he wants to get that job done. Right, right. <laughs> right. That's, that's so right. So he tell you, he, he liable to tell you anything, I'm firing you for having brown eyes, you know. But, <laughs> right. but the truth is, he's got a cousin or a brother-in-law somewhere. That's right. Well, thanks well, for calling, Leon. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the job you, you, you guys do. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're trying to stand up for workers here on the Workers Beat. That's 972-647-1893. I, I kind of hate to get into these longer things, but this is so important that I want, I want to pass it on. This is something that Richard Trumka said in Missouri uh, just, uh, I think it was on Tuesday. He was there speaking, and he brought up Ferguson. Missouri. This is the president of the AFL-CIO. They used to never say anything about anything except wages and benefits. But this is what Trumpka said on the question of race. Quote, The question of unity brings up a hard subject, a subject all of us know about, but few want to acknowledge race. I'm talking about race in America and what that means for our communities, our movement, and our nation. Because the reality is that while a young man named Michael Brown died just a short distance from us in Ferguson, from gunshot wounds from a police officer, other young men of color have died and will die in similar circumstances in communities all across this country. It happened here, but it could have happened and does happen anywhere in America because the reality is we still have racism in America. Now, some people might ask me why our labor movement should be involved in all that has happened since the tragic death of Michael Brown in Ferguson, and I want to answer that question directly. How can we not be involved? Rich Trumka, speech in Missouri, AF of LCIO blog. What do you think of that? I really like him. I really do. He's very inclusive. He sure took up uh, race. 972-647-1893. One of the best things he ever said was uh, when President Obama was running for president. You know, the labor movement didn't come out for President Obama first. Not at first. They all hang back, and we're all they looking hang, at them. Well, come and, on! And finally, he got the nomination, you know. <laughs> and then uh, Richard Trumka was addressing the National AFL-CIO Convention, and he said, get over it. He was talking about, you know, you, you, you think you might not want a black person for a president? Get over it. 
And uh, that was the, <laughs> the specific instructions yeah. from the leader of the labor yeah. movement well, when I, President I, Obama was running. And, and I'm so glad that, that they got over it. Yeah. You know, uh, and I know they this, haven't got over it. Well, there's a lot of people who haven't gotten a over lot it of them are day. still not. A, they're never going to get over it. Yeah. So, you know, it's like my dad, <laughs> my dad used to say, uh, you know, you can get over it or you can die mad. But the, <laughs> but the workers movement, the, the FLCIO did vote for a black president. Yes. And uh, and campaigned hard for him. Yes. And uh, some in fact, Johnny Rodriguez from here in Dallas uh, proposed was the first to propose to his union, United Food and Commercial Workers, that they support President Obama, That's and uh, so we had something to do with that right here in Dallas. Nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. If you would like to get your point of view in, me and Bonnie tend to agree with each other. Yeah, and, so you guys uh, should like. You can call. On. I don't mean you couldn't agree. If right. You, you can. You I mean, you can disagree, disagree if you want to. But yeah, but you could also disagree. Nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. It's a, it's a great country, and it's a great time to be a working person. I was at the AFL-CIO meeting on Thursday night, and, and this was the first year of Mark York's tenure. Mark York is the controversial head of the Dallas AFL-CIO. I say he's controversial because he does a lot of stuff. And when you do stuff in the union movement, if you do something to help somebody, you're going to make somebody else mad. That's the way it is. Yep. Uh, every time somebody gets something, somebody else gets mad because they didn't they didn't get it. And if you're not making people mad, you're probably not doing it right. Yeah, you're probably not. <laughs> so Mark York has been the most activist head of the AFLCO that I have ever seen. Yep. Uh, in Dallas. In Dallas, that's and, uh, he's got and it he's in on. line with the national with yeah. Rich Trumpka and with national AFLCO. And there was a long, 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 long time when I felt that the AFLCO at the national level was getting way, way ahead of everybody at the local level. And I'm not just talking about Dallas. I'm talking about the whole labor movement in, in the United States. Because you can't just, just because you win in, in Washington doesn't mean that everybody else is just going to jump up and, and, and <laughs> jump start on your bandwagon. pulling with you, you know. And, Boy, have we found that out. <laughs> yeah. And that's the same thing true with President Obama. He might come out with some pretty good ideas, and it doesn't mean that the Democrats out out in Nevada, you know, someplace are going to go for it. That's right. So, so it's like that in the labor movement. It's like that in politics. When you do something, uh, you make somebody else mad. But when Mark York announced that he had finished one year of his leadership of the Dallas FLCO, everybody applauded. Yep. That was something. We are doing more stuff at the AFLCO than I have ever seen. Yes. I have never seen the, the opportunities to work with everybody else that they have now at the Dallas AFLCO. Uh, people that have never seen a union don't know the don't know the first thing about a union should be jumping in and and joining with AFLCO, the most progressive organization that they can join with. And no. uh, I mean, if you're now we, they can do it and they should. And SEIU, we, we've brought SEIU into the fold uh, here locally. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there that may know that they have a union, but they may not know about the CLC. Mm -hmm. And and you should know about the Central Labor Council because we're moving and shaking. I'm going to try something. Uh, there's a movie coming on called Pride. It's going to be at the Angelica. Uh, seen the advertisements, but I don't know when it's coming on. It's about gay and lesbian people helping a union strike. It takes place in England, but nevertheless, as gay and lesbian people come in and help people that are on a union strike. And I am going to ask if we can't go to that movie and see how people can work together and then start an organization in Dallas called Pride at Work. Yeah. Which, which is yeah. AF, the AFL-CIO encourages this committee. But we ain't ever had one. In we Dallas. need one. Pride at Work is for gay and lesbian members of, well, they don't have to be union members. Right. Uh, members of the community that want to work with labor. Yep. And we need to get that started. Yes, we do. Let's talk about that next week. All right. We'll be back. Thanks. Have a great week. KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. 
KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.